Okay, podcast number number five, I believe. Um, we have so many friends around the world that um, are sailing and also affected pretty hugely by global events, pandemics and other bits. We thought like we'd see how they're getting on when we all talk. So today's podcast, we are talking to our friend Josh and Benita, who are sailing Nanji to all of you who don't know. Pretty amazing YouTube channel. They are impeccably disturbingly good surfers <laughs> uh, and, and, and from our point of view I have I feel completely humbled with this with Yoshi's ability to catch a wave um, when I look like I, I am literally I'm a flailing pig on a fiberglass board so uh, welcome welcome Yoshi and Benita uh, to, our, <laughs> to, to our podcast awesome um so um, we've got some questions for you and, you know, we will obviously hope, well, we firstly hope that everything, you're safe and that your families are safe because that's the important thing. Um, without further ado, let's, let's ask you, uh, how are you getting on? Tell us firstly a little bit about your channel for those of you who don't follow Sailing Nanji. Okay. okay, well, uh, we've been sailing or we've been living on board our boat Nanji for uh, three and a half, four years now, I think. Yep. And we first sailed away from the Queensland coast in 2017 in July. So we've been offshore cruising for probably, however that mass is, about two and a half years. Three years. Three yeah. years now. Yeah, and so we, we first left and went to the Pacific and since sailed through Asia and done a lot of boat work and we went back into Indonesia for a season and since returned to Thailand and we are now in Langkawi. We had big plans of crossing the Indian Ocean this year but how the, everything is unfolding we don't really know what the next plan is I guess. Yeah. Right, yeah I know I think a lot of people are in that position at the moment um, yeah. so you're definitely not alone there. Um, so tell us a bit about why you decided to kind of move on to a boat and, and start sailing around the world in the first place what yep. kind of prompted that decision so we were ocean addicts before we were sailors and um, our love for the ocean um, like nick said the surfing and um yeah so we had we lived in a bus and we towed um, a tinny which is a small boat around and every spare second that we had we were in the ocean we were uh, free diving spear fishing absolutely addicted to it and then we got chatting one day and we're like what if we lived on the water? <laughs> like, how good would that be if the ocean was our home? And so we started researching boats and um, we didn't know how to sail. We had no sailing experience. And, um, yeah. and it just kind of grew from there. <laughs> I guess things elevated quite fast because yeah, living in the bus and then we were, we were restricted to just traveling around Australia. And then we thought, well, if we have a boat, we can travel around the world. So yeah, uh, yeah it only took a couple of months and we found and ourselves Nanji. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and where was she? Where was she th when you bought her? Uh, so we were in Western Australia at the time and Nanji was in Airlie Beach in Queensland, Australia. Uh, so which is the exact opposite side of the country. Um, yeah, Nanji could have been anywhere. Nanji could have been in Tasmania and we would have went to Tasmania and bought her. We pretty much fell in love with yeah. Nanji straight away. Um, and every boat we looked at was always compared back to Nanji. And so we... Yeah. Yeah. That's why we bought Nanji pretty, pretty cool. much. Yeah. yeah. So so tell us tell us a little bit about Nanji. Tell us about the boat itself. Uh, she's a Bruce Roberts design. It was thirty six foot design that was stretched to a forty. Uh, so it's forty foot long, three point four meters beam. Um, we're a full kill vessel and we're a cutter rig sloop. So uh, yeah, we have like a, a center cockpit, so we've got a big aft cabin, uh, V berth, um, yeah. yeah, and otherwise the rest is just pretty much living space. We've, we've done a lot of work on her. When we first bought her, she was in a pretty bad way. She'd been neglected for a year, and so um, we didn't know anything about boats, but we got stuck right into it. We were on a pretty big budget, so a pretty tight budget. So we um, did all the work ourselves, and um, yeah, that's how it all started, I guess. And Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, she's gone from being a, a derelict boat that floated into something we're pretty... <laughs> pretty pride to to call our own now yeah. yeah yeah well listen i mean we we watched your video a couple of weeks ago um and to tell you the truth it is every sailor's worst nightmare yeah so yeah, yeah um firstly you know the work that you've done on fiberglass um to get nanji up and afloat again is insane you know congratulations you know you really are a, a craftsman there so um for those of you who haven't watched their video they they were on a mooring ball uh, and you've grounded your boat and put a hole in it now i'm going to just 
uh, tell us everything there. Well, I guess the long story sh in shortened versions. Uh, yeah, so we're on a mooring at Snap to the Squall, one o'clock in the morning. Um, before we knew it, before we'd, the anchor alarm had woken us up and we had flicked the isolator switch, turned on the motor, and we are already grinding on the reef before we even come up into the cockpit. Yeah. And we just, we have a brand new engine, it's powerful, um, and we had it at full throttle trying to get out over this reef, but it had pushed us sideways into the reef, so we were just like stuck. Yeah, yeah and it, um, it, was, it was pitch black and blowing 40 knots, and so we were just kind of, we were stuck and we were trying to find our way out. Um, but it was big spring tides at the time as well, and so the tide was dropping rapidly fast. Yeah. And yeah, before we knew it, we just had to accept the fact that we were on the reef. Um, and then once that exception kind of occurred, I suppose we, we pretty well moved quickly into the next phase. And it was, uh, I remember having that little clarification in my mind. It's like, whatever you do now is going to be dramatic to what happens in the future and if, to be able to save Nanji. And so from that, we started ripping up the floor and everything and because the water was dropping we kind of knew we had a bit of time um and so, so yeah it, the tide was dropping and yeah. um we had i think six hours until was it four or six hours until low tide yeah it was, it so, was so we had like three four hours until low tide yeah. um and but from that we started to get water into the bilge during the time so we, we went outside and we started running lines and the anchor and Tried to see where we were positioned, but it was pitch black, so it was all like under torchlight. We're trying to figure out how and where we were. Um, and then we're putting fenders under the side to try to cushion Nanji because of all their weight. Last thing we wanted to be healing right over onto our top sides. Um, and so, yeah, then we just kind of got fenders in and then we started ripping up the floor and saw some compressions and we managed to fiberglass up over one big area on the inside because um, we knew that water was going to be coming in through there. And so when we got all the water out, we felt we were on top of the water and then we had the boat all positioned up so like we were nice and upright and not healed right over and then was just waiting for the water to come in but when the water started coming yeah. like water started rising it started there coming was still in the water boat coming in and so we hadn't found all the leaks and so i was bailing josh was outside doing other things and it got to the point where i realized i can't bail fast enough i just can't hold like it, the water was rising and rising and so um that yeah so i realized uh, we need some help like yeah, yeah. So. and we kind of realized that all the holes weren't there and so we thought as a little added bonus we were just leaning on the port side and so we knew starboard was sweet so it was just on port and we needed to find them and so uh, from that I ripped out our water tank uh, like so we had all our fresh water draining out of all the taps and so we ripped out the water tank I ripped the table out started cutting all the floorboards and cutting the furniture apart to try to find the areas of where the hole was and it turns out to be under the drawer fridge in the saloon, which I happened to install in Indonesia last year. That's his pride and joy. <laughs> that, that was, was like my pride and joy. <laughs> I was like, no, <laughs> I don't want to come up my... <laughs> Yeah, I didn't want to cut it up. But, like, but from that, it was like, there's no point in saving your fridge if you can't save your boat. And so it's just, <laughs> it literally just turned into ripping everything apart. Um, and then we found that patch. And by this time, a couple of Thai guys that were... Uh, couple of Thai rangers from the island of where we were um they yeah. come out to help us out and so they were downstairs and they were helping us like smash it. so we got some rags and like pounded them into the holes and then uh, we had a heap of like epoxy putty that kind of sets in water and smashing all that in there and um, we were super lucky that these Thai guys it's a bit of a charter boat haven and so it wasn't the first time they dealt with a boat on the rocks and <laughs> Um, it's like notorious, it like was, it's something, they're like, this happens all the time, yeah. it's fine, and we're like, oh. Well, like, oh, well, like, yeah, please help save us. <laughs> but yeah, so they, they went in and they had a big submersible bilge um, and a long hose, and so we hooked that yeah. up onto our batteries, and we, we managed to keep all the water forward of, like, of the engine and the battery bank and all that sort of stuff, which was our biggest thing, like, we, that's what we need to protect and save, so we, if we do float, we need to be able to move. Um, and so we managed to seal it off all the water in just the forward half. And then these boys brought over this massive ass bilge pump that just managed to pump out as much water between the bailing, uh, fiberglassing, putting the rags in the holes and everything. We'd managed to stem the water from coming in to the same amount of water that was going out. And then, yeah, and then from that, once high water finally come, we managed to weave our way through the and reef. With it was like, only like a small amount of water inches. that we were in. You know? Yeah, and then so we managed to get back through out with uh, these couple of tie lads in the water and directing us and, and then in the tender pushing the bow around because we don't have a thruster. And 
yeah, and then we managed to get out into deep water. And then from there, it was the decision of, uh, do we beach her? Um, and the Thai lads were like, there's a nice beach around the corner. We can do that. And we have we had probably five litres of epoxy and heaps of fiberglass on board. Uh, but we felt kind of confident as if we did that, we felt like we are going to be in more strife. Uh, and so we kind of sat there for 10 minutes and monitored everything. And it was, by this stage, all the squall would blow through. This was like, this had taken 12 hours. Um, and then, yeah, so through that, then we're like, well, let's just do it. We're going to take it on. We're going to head to the nearest boatyard, which is where we, ironically, we had left about 10 days earlier. Um, and so we headed straight back there. And we just motored and we took it slow. And um, as the wind built, we just, well, we didn't put up any sails because we didn't want to pound and we didn't want to bash. And uh, the angle to the wind is where we were, where we were going. The, the compressions were on the opposite side. So um, there wasn't really any bashing against the compressions. And yeah, we just took it steady and slow. And it was a really long sail. It was really long. It felt like <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. shit. Yeah. I mean, yeah. listen, listen, all right. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, that's, that's it. Before I just heard that story, my biggest fear was being sexually assaulted by a clown. Um, <laughs> and now? <laughs> and now, now the sexual yeah. assault by a clown seems yeah. like a... Yeah. It's, <laughs> seems like, yeah. it's like, seems I like happily forgo yeah. <laughs> Zippos. It, it has, uh, it's oh, crazy. Man. It's rattled our senses a little bit. Like whenever we... Some, oh, whenever if the tender bangs on the side of the hull we're like what's that you know we're still a little bit yeah. jumpy with the anchoring and everything and i think it's going to be a little while for us to really settle back into it yeah um, yeah, totally. it's, um, yeah so so tell us about the the damage that was done in the end because i know josh and, and benita you had to like rebuild your rudder is that right yeah yeah correct so the rudder was totally smashed um that was from partly of trying to make our way out and so because the wind was so strong we don't have a bow thruster i was trying to reverse a bit because you can't hold the bow into the wind and so i was trying to reverse around and so it was really the rudder that was smashing into stuff that took a lot of the brunt um and then we had four compressions in the hull uh so nanji's a strip cedar wood boat um sandwiched in epoxy fiberglass on either side and so we had these compressions that had gone through so the fiberglass was cracked on the outside and the wood had smashed and broken and then the glass on the inside was cracked. And so we didn't have like distinctive holes. It was more water just, just like water, squirting like, in but like through if, areas. If so. those compressions on the inside push through, then it would be a big hole. Yeah. So it was, yeah. 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 We weren't sure. And how did you, how exactly did you patch, patch it up from the inside? What did you do? Uh, so with the, with the first compression that we found that it was the major one that we managed to fiberglass over. So as the water dropped, okay. Uh, basically just got a lot of epoxy um, and some fiberglass. We had lots of surfboard fiberglass. I used only just thin glass because I didn't want it to take forever to try to seal and hold. Yep. So we used lots of glass and just patched it all down over the top and that was the biggest. That was yeah, the biggest so essentially one. the boat was dried out for several hours. And Correct. At yeah. that point you, were, you had so, a, an opportunity, a window yeah. opportunity to, yeah. to actually use fiberglass, which yeah. is actually it was, probably very yeah. lucky. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was just the long enough I have. to keep Correct. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, you're right. No, um, so the mooring ball that you were on, I'm assuming that you dived it um, before you... This is, uh, before the, you... this is the biggest problem, which, why it occurred, and I broke my absolute number one cardinal rule. Uh, beforehand, if we stay out on a mooring, I always dived on it. And even on the anchor, I always dive on the anchor and suss it all out. We always, like, if it's, we always anchor in 20 metres or whatever, so you can always dive down and see the anchor. And here, we got sucked in to... Uh, we arrived to the anchorage at 5.30, not a drop of wind, clear skies, beautiful tropical little island, and picked up the mooring and thought, she'll be right. And yeah. lit literally the first time I've never dived on a mooring, it broke Murphy's Law. Uh, yeah. Listen, mate, we've, we've had friends that have done the same. We actually had a, a couple of our friends also did the same in uh, Dominica, and they actually they knew that a squall was coming through and the bloke who owned the mooring ball said look it's a brand new ball i'm going to charge you 10 bucks more for this ball because everything is so new like, and shiny it's too and new and oh shiny God. and nothing's wrong and they woke up on the rock so oh, wow. and, and to tell you the truth yoshi you know yeah. don't beat yourself up over this because we've done the same you get into an anchorage you crack a cold one yeah. you've had a, a long sail and you think meh 
Don't worry about it. Yeah, it'll be fine. So, yeah, you know what, mate? You know, yeah. it's, I, I said this in the last podcast. It is all fair and well for armchair sailors to sit there and say, well, that's not the correct, correct protocol. Mm -hmm. That is absolute horseshit when it comes down to actually trying to, you know, the actual practicalities of living on a boat. And I've been there. We've been there. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, but, you know. And even if yeah. you had dived on it, Appreciate you may not have yeah. actually picked up on any yeah. issues. Yeah. And, yeah. So, it's been so, yeah. the, the people that, the amount of people that have reached out and said that this has happened to us as well was, it's yeah. just yeah, amazing. It and, um, yeah. you know, the same thing that you said, don't beat yourself up over it. Like, I, I, yeah. I definitely went through a phase where I did and because it was, a, yeah. I felt it was 100% my fault and I was so no. angry at myself for not doing it. But yeah, I've, I can imagine I've, that. Yeah, I've lived and learned, and I totally understand from it yeah. now. Yeah, he had the therapy on the grinder. As soon as we got into the boat, yeah, I'm sure <laughs> yeah. a lot of people might feel like, oh, I want to feel sorry for myself or whatever. Yosh is just like, no, nah, give me the grinder, and that was his therapy. He was on that thing yeah. for ten hours a day, you know, just working his butt off, like yeah. fixing it. So no, that, that's a good way. That's a, yeah. that's uh, you know, lucky that that was your therapy because yeah, I mean, it was interesting when we were sailing in the Caribbean. I mean, we were there 2016, 2017, and we found that a lot of areas uh, in those two years went from anchor fields to mooring ball fields. Yeah. And we said at the time, you know, I have a hundred, I have a lot more faith in my ground tackle because I examine it every day. I know the size of our anchor. I know where the chain's been. I know the shackle. Mm. I know that, you know, everything is retained. And I have far more faith in my in our ground tackle than I do in a mooring ball. And we've died on mooring balls before, and we're like, nah, if this blows up. And, and also, the, the lines on the mooring balls can be completely covered in, like, you know, growth. And yeah. it can be so hard to Absolutely. see whether there's any issues or not. You're like, well, it looks okay to me. I don't know. I mean, you can't actually see the, the components that make up. Uh, listen... Uh, and you know, as I said, you know, from what you've you know you said, the way that you handled the situation, yeah, you know, I mean, getting into trouble is, you know, or get, having problems at sea is a guarantee. It's guaranteed. You, there is there is no sailor that has done any sailing that hasn't had a problem from a halyard wrap to a you know something more severe like yeah. yours. But you know, a testament of the of, of the man, and when I say um, the man, I mean the the, the man and the woman. But the, te the testament of your is how you deal with the problem. You know, so, you know, if you'd, if you'd been running around, you know, crying with your pants on your head, <laughs> not doing anything and watching the boat sink, yeah. you know, that, <laughs> I'd probably have been, actually, you know, you two, maybe you should have taken your pants off your head. But, yeah. you know, you yeah. dealt with it like champ. Yeah, yeah you're right. And, and you know Thank what? You. Um, I understand that it's 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 pretty it, it's pretty scary. And, yes, all the things that have happened to us, you learn, but it makes you fearful. And it made, you know, there's things that I've done on it that scared me. You know, and I'm and and the greater the the greater the problem, um, you know, the, the the greater the time it takes to get over. And to me, you know, you if and I'm not saying you know you 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 look you two are, are far harder than us pair of soft city dwellers at the moment. <laughs> but you know, if it takes you a while to get over this, then don't beat yourself up because it would probably take me a, a year. Yeah, I, I would be traumatized. It, yeah, I probably oh yeah, I'd have had to be on probably 365 mooring balls after that to, <laughs> to ever, ever feel safe. So, you know, um, you yeah. know, and you know, fair play to you. You know, that, that the story sent me cold. So yeah, it really know. did. It's every as Nick said at the very beginning, it's everyone's worst nightmare, and you guys dealt with it so so well. And you know what? Like you can kind of take it either way because I I would probably be quite traumatized. But then again, it's not until you put under pressure and you put in these situations and you're having to problem solve that you actually like have faith in your own abilities. And the learning experience is probably invaluable. And Nanji is you know like good as ever she's fine yeah. and uh you guys are fine and it's all okay now so yeah i mean you guys have so much n more experience to draw on now and if something happens again then you'll be better prepared Absolutely. to deal with it um so one question that a lot of people are going to want to know because that follow your channel is how's marley Oh, he's <laughs> yes, he of course. So we didn't even yeah. mention. He was here before, and I was trying to deal with him. But he yeah, was poking he's his good. nose in. No, nah, he's, yeah, he's he's really so good. good yeah. He's um he's yeah. uh we're anchored near like a little beach, so he um yeah he gets to tear yeah, that apart every day. Every day. And chew coconuts. Okay. And stuff, so, yeah. <laughs> For those of you who don't follow Nanji, um, Marley's their dog. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yes. just say that. He's only Marley's a four-year-old. Oh, we just we just him with a ball. <laughs> uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yes. Okay, so let's move on to something a little bit more um, kind of relevant for not just um, kind of sailors, but also everyone else watching or sorry, listening to this podcast, um, which is the 
pandemic at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's affecting everyone, obviously, probably everyone in the world right now. Um, and I, I feel like at the beginning, everyone, including us, was saying, oh, this is the time where you really want to be out on your boat, you know? This is the moment. This yeah. is what we all kind of think of when we go sailing. We're like, oh, if the world comes to an end, then at least we're out on our boat and we can just kind of get on with our own lives and it won't right. really affect us as much as if we were living on land. Yeah. But as things have progressed, I feel maybe that people on their boats are actually at a disadvantage here. Like, I feel like you guys are in a much more stressful situation than we are in, you know, Correct. the house in London. I mean, how has all of, all of this kind of evolved for oh. you? Tell us about what's been happening. Well, when it first, um, you know, broke out and um, and uh, countries started closing their borders um, and, and, you know, changing their quarantine regulations and stuff, that was really scary. It was like... You didn't like, and every day it was like you had to, um, you know, we, we were thinking, oh, okay, this place we can't go, but we could go here. And we felt like we still had options, you know, and we were still kind of planning on moving. And then as it just progressed and progressed daily. more every day, it was like, no, this has changed, this has changed, this has changed. And now it's to the point where we are sitting ducks. So we, um, we're definitely not going to sail across an ocean and not know how we're going to be received at the other end. So, um, yeah. yeah, and I feel like it's kind of wrong to be almost, um, you know, moving around to like remote communities and stuff where um, they would be probably terrified um, to see a boat arrive at this point in time. So, yeah, we are um, just staying where we are at the moment and... Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess in a way we were kind of lucky in in a respect because as we, we snuck into Langkawi, Malaysia, two days before they had closed their borders, and you get a three month visa upon arrival upon Langkawi. So we have we do have quite a long time to stay here. Whereas other neighbouring countries like Indonesia and Thailand, they have a much shorter visa, and uh, people in the Maldives that, that begun their crossing, is they're, they're in the same boat, and they're really starting to feel the pressure of uh, where they can go because everywhere yeah. to the west of them is closed, um, and it's pretty hard to get back to this area, and so countries just aren't accepting vessels, and so it's only if where the countries are if they do accept and extend visas, where some, some places have been doing that and extending visas for people uh, because of this scenario, but... Uh, other countries aren't as lenient, you know, and so it's, yeah, it is quite difficult for other people, but for us personally, we were quite lucky to sneak in and get our three-month visa just before it all really started beginning, so. Yeah. Do I remember, I remember when we, when we caught up in Thailand in October, November, do I remember correctly, you speak Malay. Did you both learn Malaysian? Uh, um, or, no. or was that, did I dream that? <laughs> Uh, so, or is it uh, Indonesian? It, it, in, Indonesian, Indonesian Bahasa. So, so Indonesian language. Bahasa and Malaysian Bahasa is similar. Um, and so we spent quite a long time in Indonesia. So I can't say I speak it fluently, but we can definitely get our way around and find what we need speaking Indonesian. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I mean, so. Langkawi, uh, you are quite lucky, actually, because Langkawi is, is quite, a, you know... Um, I don't know whether developed is the right word, but you've certainly got supermarkets and you've Correct. got, you yeah. know, amenities and facilities there. Yeah. So it's kind yeah. of, it's really lucky that you were able to get to somewhere like Langkawi yeah. um, exactly in time right. before Absol all the borders closed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, no, you're absolutely spot on correct. It is quite a, a tourist island, but obviously there are no tourists here at the moment. There's only other yachties, but it is an island that was quite dedicated for yachting and um, yeah, so like there is, it's quite a developed island, but yeah. it is isolated away from Malaysia as well. So in yeah. that regard, we ha we have all the amenities that we need. Um, Benita went in it's food shopping the other yeah. day. Uh, we went in food shopping yesterday. We weren't sure how what the climate would be because you know under these circumstances people can panic and um, I guess yeah. um, throw their feelings at. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. so I yeah. wasn't sure. Yeah, um, yeah. So I wasn't sure what the climate would be, and everyone was wearing masks. There weren't uh, many clo uh, cars on the road, but um, everyone in the supermarket was wearing a mask. Um, 
so they were all being like super careful and um, they were really respectful of each other everyone was really calm there was no rushing or anything and everyone was really friendly towards us as well so we and there was got, toilet like, paper on the shelves yeah lots of um, <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> can you, <laughs> can you FedEx some of that stuff <laughs> you know there's only so many there's only so many ramen wrappers you can yeah. use to wipe your backside before <laughs> it starts to scratch a little bit so yeah <laughs> especially if you get those extra chilly ones <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen. Um, yeah. So um, obviously we're gonna, you know, it's pretty. It's amazing to see that you're both safe and lovely to see you both again. Um, and thank you for looking after us when we were in Thailand. Um, any message you've got for, you know, to, to, to cruisers or to, you know, that you know, to other sailors or to people sat at home that you want to put across about, you know, how you're doing or how advice you could give. Uh, for sailors, I would probably suggest just staying where you are at the moment and bunkering down and just enjoy the serenity, enjoy where you are and, yeah. Yeah, stay at home really, that's the yeah. biggest thing about this current time is yep. staying at home and staying away from people, social distancing and that's really all you can do. So hopefully other sailors, they have a boat full of food and you can social distance really well. That's, yep. the, that's the isolation, yep. I guess, that we can utilise at the moment, but... Um, yeah. yeah, that's that's the best thing, I suppose. We just got to everyone has to do their part and try to yeah. help resolve this situation that's going on. It's watch, crazy. Just stay at home and watch sailing channels on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> watch our channel. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Listen, a, a, amen to that. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. The world, listen, yeah. lovely, lovely to see you, and yeah. you know. Um, we hope genuinely that within the next 12 months, you know, that we, the four of us, are sat cracking a beer together and, 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 and you know, and, and just talking about, you know, do you remember that time we all had to stay at home for two months? Um, so that's Yoshi and Benita. Yeah, um, so just so to clarify, the um, YouTube channel is Selling Nanji, yep. and Nanji is, how does Nanji spell? It's got a strange spelling. Yeah, so Nanji is spelled N A N D J I. Nanji. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that was Selling Nanji. We'll be back again with another podcast over the next weeks. Yes. And, uh, you know, sign up, stay tuned, <laughs> and uh, hope you enjoyed it. So, thank you. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thanks for having thank us, Legends. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode. If you would like to listen to our other podcasts, then go ahead and search for the Boat Life podcast, and don't forget to subscribe. For more videos, then please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be back next week with another video for you.